Okay, y'all. Good morning. Good morning. It's uh, Sunday morning, and uh, yeah, uh, y'all see, I got Bobby loaded up. It's, it's 80 degrees, man, and it's nine o'clock in the morning, man. So uh, I wanted to comment on the comments of the video yesterday about the Skag mower. Uh, I've had a, I had a couple guys come in the comments, and you know, you can tell they Skag lovers, you know. <laughs> I love it when I when I when I when I turn the damn wrench on their ass, you know. Again, the Skag mower is a mower that I can make money with. Okay, the Skag mower is not no slouch. Don't get it twisted. I prefer the X Mark mower, and what you saw yesterday is just another reason why I do. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of reasons. The number one thing being the comfort. And the space on the mower. See the X mark, there's more room for the for the operator. There's more space. I don't care what anybody says. You got a place to put your cub, you got a place to put stuff. Skag don't have none of that. They don't have a they got a little cup holder, but you can't uh you can't put like a, a pair of hand steps down in there because the cup holder is is just a frame, a metal a, a little metal frame just to hold a cup. That's it. Or a water bottle or whatever. You know, uh, so there's, a, I mean, that's a lot of reasons why I don't like the Skag. Another one of the big reasons why I don't like the Skag is the way the blades are and the way you, what you have to go through to change the blades. And like I mentioned in the video the other day, or I pointed it out, I have, I have welded those nuts on top of the bolts to where I don't have to hold a wrench up top. Uh, you know, to get the blades off the skag. Uh, but it's still a big process because you got to pick the mower up or have the mower up so high to pull the damn rod out, you know, the, the big long bolt. I just, I, I just you know, y'all, and you know, all you guys that watch the channel, y'all know that, that my thinking on that. I just don't understand that, man. When they're, I mean, they're the only ones that still do that. they doing that shit just like they did back in 1985. You know, I don't know, man. I'm just not a big fan of that. So, yeah. Uh, one guy came in the comment and said, just blow the mowers off after every yard. You know, well, that's a little bit more work, uh, you know, than I want to do. I ain't in the mower cleaning business. I'm in the money making lawn mowing business. And we should not have to blow a mower, mower off it every time we make 50 or $60, you know. I mean, that's just my thinking. It gets wet, rainy, hot. It's hot out here. I don't know where y'all live at, but it's hot out here. I ain't trying to, trying to, uh, you know, blow a mower off after 10 minutes every time I use it for 10 or 15 minutes, man. Come on, man. That ain't even practical. Another guy said, you need to get some blowers that'll blow, that, that'll blow it hard. Well, I don't know what, you know, I mean, I got a BR-800, a BR-700, and a, and a BR-600. I mean, I, those blowers should be should be efficient enough, uh, efficient enough to blow a freaking mower off, you know. I don't know, man. Uh, grass just seems to get in every crevice. And I ain't just talking. I'm showing you, you know. I mean, and there are some things about the x mark that I don't like, too. Uh, you know, one guy came in the comments, I don't remember who it was, but said that grass gets hung up around the battery. You're right, it does. That you're, you, I, It does. Uh, but it doesn't get hung up. Grass does not get hung up on the X marks around the wiring harness and all the electrical stuff. You know, it was the same way with the Ferris mower. The Ferris mower, grass, I didn't use it as much as I did these mowers, but the Ferris mower was the same way, because it was an older mower. Uh, it, it, it had a lot of ledges, just, you know, I don't know. I will say this though, if you don't have twill tires on your Turf Tiger 2, you don't have the problem that I have. You don't. You're not, and another thing, uh, for you to blow the grass out from that little crevice there that I was talking about where that hook comes down for the brake, you, you can't blow that out. I mean, I, I, I've stuck a BR-800 on it. You have to literally get in there, 
with what I've used are the files for the chainsaws, get in there and, and, and loosen the brass up to get it out of that groove in there. It's a terrible design, man. I mean, I ain't just talking, man. I mean, dude, you know, well, this, you know, you just blah, blah, blah about the skag. No, uh, quit crying about it. Well, I paid 15 grand for the skag, so I'm in. Which is a lot more than I can say for a lot of guys that come in the comments talking about what I think about the skag, how wrong I am. They ain't even spent no money on one. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but damn, I'm wrong, justifiably wrong, I guess, because I, I did put uh, 15K uh, in the mower. So, one thing that I'm gonna do, uh, you know, I had that piece of steel left over from the table that I made for the shop, right, the tabletop. What I may do is on the side where the brake is, I may cover that area up, that plate up. That there's a big hole there, and I didn't even hardly notice it until I dipped the camera down to the twill tires yesterday when I was doing the editing, and, and I could see right through there. Uh, and so the grass is coming through there hardcore, hardcore, man. And once it gets up into them little tight spots and it's wet grass, you ain't gonna just blow it out. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I've, I've had the skag for two years, man. Uh, I mean, if it were that easy, then I wouldn't even take the time to do a video on it. It's a constant thing I'm having to do. And it ain't gonna make or break me, but I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna clean the mower every time I use it. I mean, damn, dude. Maybe some, some guys that, May, may have time to do that, you know? I I don't have time and don't want to take the time to, to spend 15 minutes on the skag after I, every time I make 50 or $60 with it. It's just my thinking, man. So, yeah, moving on. So today, uh, I got, I got y'all see I got Bobby on here. I'm going over here to the bamboo site. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, rip out some bamboo we're gonna clean up a, there's a there's a piece of woods that i'm gonna clean up and we're gonna stop the bamboo from growing all up around that that shed out there because it's coming back hardcore and uh this stuff grows y'all know it grows two inches three inches a day man it's crazy man so my only concern is the front plate on the bobcat you know when you're when you're doing stuff like this and i'm not gonna use a stump bucket for this uh, if I do, it's going to be, it, it, I'm not going to put a lot of attention on it. Uh, I'm going to use a tooth bucket and the forks. The forks will be pretty good to loosen the ground up. To, uh, and then I can put the grapple on there and just use the grapple teeth. To, to, but you got to dig to get to get that stuff up. So I'm going to dig some of it out. I'm going to move. There's a bunch of debris in that little area. And that's why it keeps growing up because we can't do anything else with it. Uh, there used to be a building in there or something. I think I showed it in a video a couple weeks ago. Uh, but it's how I'm going to spend my Sunday, man. You know? I like it. Make a little bread. Get ready for the week. So I've gotten a couple comments on the Bermuda grass over there that we laid. Uh, about, you know, the, the edges and the ends and stuff. Well, when, we, when I laid out that... We, job and I bid it on it and everything we were not supposed to run the grass all the way up to the power box we were actually supposed to be about five foot away from the power box but as we got through the job we had a bunch of you know not a bunch well a pretty good bit we probably had you know a hundred square feet of sod left you know that that we needed to do something with you know, uh, odds and end pieces and, and stuff like that. So, uh, what I did is I, and I asked the homeowner, I said, so, uh, you know, what do you want to do with this, this, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, uh, just throw it up there on the ends and stuff, you know. I said, well, if we put it up there, up there, it might not live. He said, he didn't care, but it seems to be living everywhere. Now, you know, you can't never really tell. It takes a minute for the sod to really, uh, uh, get accustomed to its new environment. 
okay? Now, we did everything that we could do for it, but right now, that sod, uh, it looks to me, and, you know, I might be wrong, <clears throat> but it looks to me with how dark green it is that it's got a lot of iron fertilizer in it or something. Not a bad thing, you know, it's, it's just something that I've, that I've seen. I have never seen sod green up that dark green this quickly in any sod job I've ever done. And I've done a lot of sod over the years, y'all. A whole heap of sod. I mean, a whole lot of sod. Uh, normally the jobs aren't six or seven pallets. They're normally like three or four, you know, but over the years, even all the way back to the very beginning, I, I've laid sod. Uh, you know so I got a pretty good bit of experience with sod and, and the way it grows uh, so I, I'm not really concerned about it living there because if, if I was concerned about that I would have never even took on the job uh, if I don't think or it's a possibility that it won't live due to sunlight or whatever then I won't do it I don't care what they're paying I won't do it man it's too much trouble for me too much of a hassle so, but those end pieces are just pieces that we threw down and, you know, just extra stuff. And I told the homeowner yesterday when I got over there, I said, look, I can cut those, you know, cut them off and make that edge even or whatever. He said he didn't care nothing about all that up by that power box because, well, the biggest thing is there's a lot of lines, cable, old cable TV lines, internet lines, and everything coming out of that box up there. I don't know what what who when why there's just a lot of utilities on that on that site and there's a lot of uh especially internet cable lines running across the property that you don't know if, uh, there's only one or two that are live but you don't know which ones are live and i'm not going through the trouble of figuring all that out so i told him yesterday that i would cut that i would cut the ends off and square it off you know and he said don't worry about it he said you know and let it spread, let it do what it's gonna do. He's not really worried about up, up there around that box. Because, because that box is actually, uh, I think half that box is on the other customer's property line. We were supposed to be five foot off the box on his property line because of all the roots and everything. I just threw the stuff down and not thinking anything about it, just left over trashy stuff. And it took, it looks like it took, so. But with the kind of weather that we've been having, it'd be hard for, unless the ground is freaking toxic, it'd be hard for sod not to actually take. Just saying. Here, uh, the goal is to get this, get the bamboo cleaned out from down here. I'm gonna walk down here real quick and kind of give y'all a before and give the camera a before uh, because I don't know, you see, y'all see my dilemma in getting good footage? Because, see, where am I going to put the camera? Uh, I don't want to destroy a $400 camera, you know, or lose it. <laughs> uh, but I think this GoPro has GPS on it or something. So, say from, from this area right here, straight through, right? From right here, this way, to the shed. That's my thinking, to the back of the... Uh, uh, what do they call it? Chicken coop. Okay. Y'all see what I'm going through to get footage? I, I mean, you know, I try to, I'm really trying to do the YouTube thing, y'all. So, we need to be able to get in this area right here. Uh, and we need to make it smooth. We need to make it where, I hate to, y'all might think I'm crazy, but we need to make this where we put a freaking lawnmower on it. See all this dense stuff? bamboo and stuff see the big trees are cool but if you can't if, if it's too tight in here to get a lawnmower in here all this right here that all that metal i'm gonna pull all that out we're gonna set it out here and he's gonna bring a dumpster over here so all this bamboo's got to go but you can't just go in here and cut the bamboo you gotta dig it up man and you gotta make it where we can put a lawnmower in here man so I want y'all to get a good shot of that before here, right? Because 
is only about 30 feet over and about 75 feet that way. We're going, we want to, we want to clear it out all around this chicken coop. Uh, I want to be able to safely run a lawnmower in here. And that's going to take some doing because there's a lot of trash in here. Uh, I think uh, years and years ago, there was a building that collapsed back here. And I wouldn't be surprised if we don't run across some snakes and all kinds of critters, you know. Uh, and the trees are in the way. See, when they set this chicken coop up, they wasn't thinking about, and the, and the owner didn't do that, uh, uh, somebody else did. They weren't thinking about you know, the bamboo and maintaining the area around the chicken coop. You gotta maintain it or you can't even walk around it. But the bamboo is so freaking invasive, man, that, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's brutal, man. I mean, it's growing inside here. So I think the owner's, the owner's here, and I think he's going to come out and detach the that coop from this pen. And we basically need to move the chicken coop. I don't know why we wouldn't put the chicken coop under here. Or, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, get, we need to get it away from the woods. Because you get in here with a machine, you know, see the ground is so rough right here. I, I mean, you can't put a lawnmower in here. If I put one in here, it'll be the damn, the surgeon mower. But you're gonna have to get all these dirt clumps up and everything. That's just from where I've been pushing and I'm tired of pushing. We gotta clean it out where we can, yeah. So, uh, I'm over here with the bobcat, so and it's got to be worthy of the bobcat work. We ain't gonna just come over here and just piddle piddle paddle around. We can come over here. We're gonna try to move some freaking mountains, man. Uh, I want y'all to picture this. This area right here, this whole area, and I, I'm gonna try to find the video. I got, I got a video on my channel about this area right here. It was woods, y'all. Bamboo everywhere, thick, just as thick as that. The ground uneven. You couldn't see nothing. I got it. I dug out over 40 stumps in that area right there. This area right here that you're seeing right here was all bamboo, all the way from that big pine tree right there. All this whole area right here, halfway across the power line was bamboo. That area up there from those tree, that tree line to the burn pile right there, all that was bamboo. So <laughs> once the bamboo takes off, there ain't no getting it and it's hard on the machine too, man. I can't stress enough how hard it is on the machine. So the first thing we'll do, we're gonna come in here, I'm gonna move this, these, these telephone poles out of the way, get them, move this, move them out of the way, and I'm gonna get up in there and start raising some hell. And they call this work, y'all. But we're gonna do it right, man, or I don't wanna do it, man, you know? Uh, this is a, 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 drun a runoff here, so uh, there's a bunch of dirt, just a bunch of, there's a bunch of stuff in here, man. And uh, I want to be able to, I want to, if, if, if they want me to keep it managed and keep it clean, then I got to be able to do that. Uh, and though it costs a little bit of money right now, it saves money in the long run if your goal is to keep the bamboo away. You don't see no bamboo growing in here. But I also got to be wary of the power lines here. You can't hit the power, this power line right here. I can't hit that. So I got to be going, everything's got to be going that way to get it on the ground and then maybe I can grab it and, and bring it out. And then when what my thinking is, is they need to come in here, back up in here and put a dumpster right here. And they put the dumpster right here, then I can come back and load the dumpster. Well, Ray, you ought to have the dumpster there now. Yeah, but the dumpsters are hard to get right now. You know, I'm waiting on another one for that other job, that pine tree job over there in Fayetteville. So, yeah, it's a lot, man. But uh, it ain't nothing that Bobby can't handle, y'all. Y'all see, it's the weirdest thing. Y'all see that? Y'all see that that ball right there? That means it's full of fluid, right? There's a leak on it, man. There was, and then it ain't leaking no damn more. Maybe some of the mud and grit done got up in there and stopped the and. It's, and made made it where it's holding holding the fluid better or something. I don't know, man. It'll leak and then it won't leak. What the hell? I don't know, man. But uh, here's the 
the new part I put on right here last week or two weeks ago. Y'all see where I tack welded that right there to where it won't back out. These things are notorious for backing out. And you can put Loctite and all that on it, but I greased every freaking port on this whole machine. So this machine is ready to go. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna make it go. y'all so y'all see a rigging 101 man we ain't we ain't nothing nice out here man but we had to put it right in my way so we got all that moved uh now we get to raise some hell in here for sure <laughs> Okay, y'all, I'm taking a little break, man. The machine, I was backing out over there where I'm at right now, and the machine made a funny noise, man. Uh, it sounded like a freaking uh, a, a, a train horn on a locomotive. It scared me. Uh, I saw I backed out of there and turned it off. Uh, I'm gonna let the machine cool down some. Uh, it ain't running hot or nothing, but it's hot out here, and I'm working it pretty hard. Uh, so, I mean, it took us an hour to move those two. It took us an hour to move these two things, man. Uh, Y'all saw how we rigged that up. Uh, and see, a lot of guys might be thinking, well, Ray, why don't you use the brush cutter? You know, if it wasn't so many trees in here, I would. But you can't. I mean, everywhere you turn, you're gonna the brush cutter is so big. Everywhere you turn, you're gonna hit something, and then you still got to dig it up. So I'm just trying to move a little dirt and and uh, that kind of thing. So basically, what we're gonna be doing is all these little trees I'm taking out. So like the one I took out right there. So all there's one, two. There's like 10 in here. Uh, we're gonna get all them little trees out of the way. The ground is real uh, sandy or something. This is great soil, by the way. It's beautiful, man. Look how dark it is, man. You can grow anything in this shit, man. That's why the bamboo loves it. It's like a sandy type. It, it's good dirt, man. Uh, it's better dirt than I would get from, but 
I mean, those two mountains of dirt, that's great dirt, dude. Topsoil, anyway, I'm talking about topsoil. So, uh, but this has been a thorn in, in, in the owner's side, well, ever since uh, he, he got the property. So, there's a couple of areas like this. We're gonna get all this stuff out of here, but I can't really man, uh, manage none of this, uh, you know, uh, I mean, I can't, I, I really can't manage it if I don't, ha if I don't have space in here. Um, uh, I want to be able to put what a freaking lawnmower in here. That's all I want all this to be able to go around these trees with a mower. So if the tree is six foot from, I mean, five foot from another tree, I'm taking it out unless it's just huge, but the big ones aren't that close together. You got one that's about six foot right there between those two big ones, but all these little ones are getting in the way. Uh, so I, I got that one out and see what, and every time I push over a little tree that makes the soil really loose to be able to grab the uh, I don't know what they call those roots on the on the bamboo somebody somebody know in the comments uh, enzymes or something like that I, I can't remember but uh, I take I took over eight inches of dirt off right over there where the where the uh, chicken coop was and I'm still pulling up big freaking roots, bamboo roots. And bamboo roots are, are kind of unique. They, you know, they're not, they don't look like your typical root. This is what they look like right here, y'all. See? And they run a long way, man. They run a long way across the ground, about that far under the ground. The only way I've ever seen get rid of bamboo is, well, yeah, the only way I ever seen to get rid of it is to dig it up. You could dig up these, and these are four to six inches under the under the soil. And you could go through here with a lawnmower or a brush cutter and cut all this off. And uh, by next week, if we if, if it's the right time of the year, by next week, it'll all have grown back. I mean, this shit grows six inches a day or something. I mean, it's crazy, especially in the friendly, rainy weather that we've been having. Uh, bamboo is not. As far as I know, and I'm not a biologist or nothing, but bamboo is not really grow hard, hard when in the middle of the summer. When it really grows and really, really grows and gets a foothold is, you know, April, May, early spring, early summer. But if we get, get a lot of rain like we just had and all those little sprouts have already sprouted, it should shoot up, man. So uh, here in about three more weeks, the bamboo will not be as aggressive as it is now. I ain't saying it ain't, it, it's, it's, it's just still not hard to deal with, but it's not as aggressively growing in August, you know, as it is in, you know, April, May. So, and somebody, somebody that knows a lot more about planting, all that could tell me. You could just Google it, I guess. But, uh, I better take a break. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna look at the machine real quick because it made a funky noise and I don't know what it was. So, I don't really see anything, anything leaking or nothing. So, damn, Ray, that engine looks clean. I know I just washed this damn thing. Yeah, the engine was covered with stuff. Changed the oil. But let's just let it cool off and yeah. Hydraulic fluid is holding steady. So but yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be taking up uh, roots like that. But I, I gotta go, I gotta I gotta see what I got what I, how I'm gonna do it this week, man. Because see to be honest with you, I have rather come over here and work than do their yards. You know what I mean? So I, I got to figure out what I'm going to do, you know. Uh, I had rather, I don't know, be over here doing this than uh, working the lawns. But uh, I guess I could send Zach and Francisco to do the lawns tomorrow. They're, they, they, they've been to both of them. Uh, yeah, they've been on that whole route. Bobby's running great, y'all. Mm -hmm. This bamboo, man, 
it is something else y'all for sure it ain't it, it, it's ugly so aggressive And it's hard on a machine, too. Once it gets a foothold like it has over here, there ain't no damn... <laughs> there ain't there ain't uh, no getting rid of it. I mean, you, you got to dig it up. And, yeah, you could have a bigger machine to dig it up. A bulldozer or something would just, you know... But you got to do something with all the dirt, you know. That's the thing about bamboo. It, it, it eats your dirt up. So when you dig it out, there's so many little roots that is holding so much dirt that uh well you got a hole it ain't like you can at least i haven't seen it like you can filter the dirt it's just rough on the machine man you know and my plate's holding up real good from the wells i put on it last week and now of course i have not put the stump bucket on it and i don't see me using the stump bucket uh unless i just you know deem i need it for something in here but that's why I'm not going here cutting these trees. I could cut them and, and get rid of them a lot quicker, but I need the ground free of these trees. So I can either brush cut it with a brush cutter, lawn mower, and everything. You know, we've been needing to do this right here for some years now. Uh, so. It just takes a lot, man, to do this, man, you know? All right, I'm going to get in the truck for a minute. Okay, y'all. So that's about all I'm gonna do today, man. Uh, I've been over here about four and a half hours. It's Sunday. I got some other stuff I gotta do. You know, I gotta get ready for the week and everything. Uh, one of the wells uh, started to crack. I can see it. It ain't cracked all the way, but it started to one of them out of four. So, uh, and I'm pretty. I've been pretty rough on it right here. You know, I'm digging. You know, digging up stuff, man, that's always the hardest on the machine. Uh, but it's better than it was, and I'm not done. I'll be back over here tomorrow. We'll work over here tomorrow, probably about four or five more hours, and uh, see what we get. I'll bring Francisco with me tomorrow because we got to cut this grass out here. So, uh, and we got another, and we got a, one of the yards we need to cut. So, one yard. And then uh, this grass out here, you know, all that and all that and yeah. So, but there, uh, this is this is uh, proving to be a lot more work than what it looks. I would have, I mean, if I had bid it on this just by looking at it, I I, I, I would I would be losing. I'd probably lose money. Uh, I would have had to approach it totally different. I mean, I guess, you know, you could go in here with a brush cutter, but then, you know, you still, you're not digging it up. You got to dig the bamboo up. No matter how you do it, it's a time consuming thing. The bigger the machine you got, the better, because you can push more. You know, in theory, if you had a great big bulldozer, you could just come here and just push everything to, out, out of the way. All the trees, uh, you know, the trees that I'm pushing over, I'm getting the stump too. Y'all can see the root balls. So, it's looking a lot better. I got pretty much got all the metal out of here, and I, I got I got a, a couple piles up there by that burn pile. Uh, but that's all I'm gonna do today, man. I'm fixing to load the machine up, uh, and go home. Whew. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna load the machine up, go home, eat some lunch, eat my Sammy, and then uh, I weld that bead again where it's it's starting to crack here there's a hairline crack i can see it so it ain't too hairline if i can see it from here uh but it was one of the ones that i noticed right right off the top that i didn't get that good 
All the other ones are holding really good. The good thing about this plate versus the plate that I had before this one is that this plate right here, there's four on four um, brackets you can uh, weld. You know, of course, there's four that can crack off too. So, uh, but the four that I can weld is better than the two on the other plate that I had. So, uh, it's a given I'm gonna get another plate. I've learned that once you start welding on this stuff, especially the like something that takes such a beating, you can. I mean, you, you can weld it and make it and, and, and make it last a lot longer. Uh, but see, my problem is this: is I don't have a big welder. The welder I got is a 120. See, if I had a, and I may have to. I, I mean, I could buy one uh, and run it on a, a 240. It, it would, it would, it would bond a lot better, and a stick welder at that. Uh, so. But this is looking really good over here, man. Uh, I mean, it's just a little bitty area, but man, it's just so, it was so, it's so bad. It still is. I'm trying to push over every tree that I can. It's going to be a pretty big, a pretty big tree for me not to try it, you know. But, uh, I better load up, y'all. Get the hell up out of here. It's Sammy Simpson, y'all. Peace out.